What's up everyone, it's Prometheus, and has this ever happened to you? You're just scrolling through YouTube, looking at espresso content, checking out what's new on the platform, you know, and then something kind of catches your eye. And it's kind of, it makes you sad, you know, because you like to swirl your espresso. What? Why are you doing this to me, James? What? Why are you doing me dirty, Jay Hoff? Why are you doing that, man? Uh, no. And if you haven't seen the video, it's definitely worth a watch, but here are the main points. Okay, maybe that's a little reductive. Here's the actual point being made. Swirling isn't as effective at mixing as stirring is. This is proven by testing samples taken from the first layer of espresso for their strength. Strength meaning total dissolved solids or TDS. But there is hope for us avid swirlers after all. And the hope comes in the shape of this propelled glass from Kruv. So Kruv has designed these EQ glasses. EQ kind of stands for equalizer. So they are basically trying to tune your cup to the type of coffee or to your coffee's specific needs. They have it for black coffee and now they have it for espresso. I was able to get one of these pre-production versions of the EQ Propel glasses from Kruv and I'm gonna put it to the test today. So first up, I'm gonna do the taste and aroma test. Now, if you look at the literature that comes from Kruv about the Propel Espresso line, it does say that it enhances aroma and you can use it to basically stir your espresso for you purely by swirling. It also keeps things warmer for longer. So I also wanna kinda of see if those things are true before I dive into the whole swirling, not swirling controversy. So I'm gonna pull a shot in each cup. I'm gonna do the Kruv Propel Cup and just the standard Demitasse from Not Neutral and kinda of see the differences between the two. So let's taste and smell some espresso. To keep things fair, I'm gonna use an espresso I'm very familiar with. This is the Sweet Cheeks Espresso that I roast for the cafe I work for. So first up is the Propel Espresso Glassware. I'm gonna give it a quick swirl and give it a quick sniff and taste. Already I can tell that the sides are coated in the espresso, so that really adds to the aroma. Flavor-wise, it comes out really nice and crisp and clean. It does taste a bit sweeter than what I remember out of just a standard cup. But let's see what it tastes like in the not neutral Demitasse. So already I can tell that it's lost some temperature. I'm gonna give it a quick stir because I swirled the other one and a quick smell and taste. So aroma is a little less, not quite as intense, and the flavor just isn't quite as clean. It's got a little bit of astringency to it as well. So there's something to that shape. All right, so it's time to get nerdy. The first shot, we're gonna do a standard cup, no stir, no swirl. What that means is I'm not gonna agitate this espresso at all before taking my samples. All the shots I'm gonna be pulling today are 20 grams in, shooting for 36 grams out, and shooting for as close as I possibly can get the time to be. But there's lots of little variations in the mix here, but I'm trying to be as scientific as possible when it comes to pulling these shots, because I know you guys are picky. But let's dive in. All right, so shot one is in the books, 35.2 grams out. Let's do some testing. Gonna make sure I zero out my TDS meter on every shot to make sure we're getting a nice accurate reading. And we're also going to make sure I'm taking just from the very top of the espresso. So let's see where we're at. 8.77% on the no swirl, no stir cup. Next up, we have the second shot. It's another standard cup and we're gonna swirl this time. So let's take a look. So I think this is a good time to mention that a lot of these extraction numbers are gonna be pretty low compared to what you're looking for in a standard shot of espresso. But remember, we're taking it from the top layer and some of them we're not even agitating at all. So just keep that in mind as we watch through the rest of these samples. Shot two's in the books at 35.8 grams out. Now let's do some measuring. Once again, we're gonna zero out our scale, keep things nice and accurate. making sure it's sufficiently dry so nothing gets into the mix. And like I mentioned, we're gonna give this one a quick swirl, taking our sample from the top, putting our filter on after taking the sample, and let's see what happens. 8.88% on this one, so on to the next. All right, shot number three, we're gonna do a standard cup and we're gonna stir this one. 
Once again, I'm doing my best to make sure I'm maintaining all the variables to keep these shots as consistent as possible. And shot number three in the books at 35.7 grams out. So let's test away. All right, so we're prepping up, got our spoon, drying off our meter, and we're diving in. So I'm gonna do the stir that I would do normally in a cafe. I don't wanna be too excessive. And once again, taking sample from the top, filter, and testing. So let's see where this one lands. 9.11%, so that's a pretty significant jump from the other two. So let's see where the propel lands. And now we're pulling into the propel, no swirl. Let's see what happens. And I know I'm rolling through these shots and these results pretty quickly, but at the end, I'm gonna show all the results and we're gonna talk about what they mean. So let's pull our propel shot. This is again, the one we're gonna be doing no agitation, pulling straight shot into the propel, moving it straight over to testing. Shot four in the books at 36.78 grams, something like that. We'll decide later. Once again, going through all the motions to keep things consistent, pulling from the top, filter on, and we're dropping. Let's see where this one lands. So 8.78%, that's not much different than the Demitas. Last but not least, we have the fifth shot, the Kruv Propel with a swirl. Sounds like a dessert. Anyway, this is our final shot. We're gonna be doing all the same stuff, 20 grams in, shooting for 36 grams out, testing from the top, all this fun stuff. The only difference on this one test is we're going to swirl the crew to see if those internal fins that are inside actually sufficiently stir the coffee as much or more than putting a spoon in there would. So let's test it. Once again, staying on track, keeping things zeroed out, and we're gonna give it a quick swirl. So we're not gonna be excessive about it. We're just gonna give it a quick, quick spin. Nothing like, you know, going crazy with it. And we're gonna pull from the top. Put a filter on, and time to drop. So let's see where this one falls. 9.44%. So this is the highest so far out of all the tests. All right, so let's talk recap and final thoughts. So during this portion, I'm gonna run all the numbers behind the screen here, showing you on shot one, two, three, four, and five, all the numbers that came along with it. And one thing I wanna say is all the numbers presented are the average of four shots on each variable. So I pulled a total of 20 shots. I've mentioned before, I'm not made of time and coffee, so I'm not gonna do hundreds and hundreds of shots, but I think this gives you a nice even view of what this cup can do. And in the end, this Kruv Propel Cup does what it's designed to do. Those fins internally stir your espresso with just swirling, which for me makes me happy because I'm an avid swirler, as I mentioned in the beginning. But I think it's important to remember that it also helps accentuate the aroma. It also helps keep things warmer with the double wall construction. Overall, it's a great addition to any espresso lover's repertoire of cups. Honestly, if I'm gonna be drinking straight espresso, this cup is gonna be the one I'm reaching for. I support Kruv. I think they're a great brand who's looking to innovate. Uh, every beverage manufacturer, every beverage industry has their own cups designed specifically for that specific fluid. So I think it's important that we support a brand who's designing something specifically for coffee. That's awesome. So good on you, Kruv. Great job. I love the Propel. I'll be using it moving forward. As always, feel free to review the numbers. I really think they speak for themselves in terms of what this cup can do. It's just a really nice piece, as well as it's just nice and aesthetic looking. So check it out if you get the opportunity. Highly recommend it. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to drop a like and subscribe if you're new around here. Turn notifications on so you're first to see the videos. You can always follow me on Instagram at Spermetheus, the blog at Spermetheus.com, and as always, stay caffeinated, pony boy.